Okay, this video is a tutorial on the basics of connecting a Chinese generic brushless motor controller, which is this one. This is like a $30 1000 watt, and it, it'll run on either 36 or 48. Uh, that's what it says on it, but in my past experience, if you open it up and look at the board in there, it actually, don't even open it up. You could connect 72, 64 volt battery to it and it, it'll work um, up to 72 volts. I'm pretty sure this one would, but for this tutorial, let's just stick with the basics. Um, this is just a pile of crap scrap battery I put together from a couple leftover projects. It's like 38 volts. Um, this it's pretty trippy when you get these this day these days from Amazon not very easy to decipher just looking at this plug knowing that it's got all these five wires in the color sequence and it says five volts that's going to tell me this is your hall connector which is going to be this one here um, this is my crazy little, little contraption. What this basically is, is this is a one of those hoverboards somebody was throwing away that had a perfectly good motors. Controller was shot, battery's garbage. With that piece of half-inch pipe as an axle, this toolbox here, I'm going to put it across the front there. Um, so it's going to be four wheels, but I'm only going to have just this one wheel of power in it. Um, the reason is I go into a pick apart over here where I live and it's huge and I get tired of pushing that fucking cart, seriously. So, yeah, I want to motor it. it. It might jump sideways. It's just an experiment. You know, we'll see what happens, but all you really need to power these on, throttle, here's your phase wires, Okay, you don't have to have the hall wires, which are this this little cable here I was showing you. It'll it'll run without the hall wires, but the thing is, is when you hit the throttle, this won't immediately start. You have to be rolling before you hit the throttle. The whole purpose of the hall sensors are this knows exactly this position off the little halls that are in there when you have those connected. So Okay, another feature here that's handy to have. Here's your throttle here. This one here is your speed control. And you can see I put a tiny jumper in there and you got blue, brown, and black. Being that black's on the outside here, that's your ground. And so with, with nothing connected, this runs at about, let's call it medium. If I put the jumper on black to brown, it's going to run slower a little bit black to blue it's going to run its highest so uh i just right now have it at its highest and the crazy thing is that's 150 no it's a thousand watt controller they claim it is this is a 150 watt wheel if i was on a hill or something and I really had a load on it, and I was pushing it, making it really work, I stand a chance of uh, burning up some of the windings inside there, being that it's rated so low, and this is putting out a lot of amperage. You can kind of get an idea right here. These are fat. This is your output from your 1,000 water. Well, the input from this motor, oh, crap, you can't really see because I already closed it all up, but they're thin. The th inputs to those, well, they're, they're about right when you think about, they're about a third as thick as this. But it's just, you know, an experiment right here to see how this goes. Anyways, this is the page they give you for your, you know, you can know how to hook up the basics. But if you ever want to get one of these and you're scared of the Chinese writing, I'll tell you, on your smartphone, Google Lens, L-E-N-S-E. Lens, I guess that's how you spell it. Um, go through the settings on it, change it from Chinese to English translate, and you'll figure out how to do it. You, you basically, you know, boom, get the, the image there, and then you push translate, 
And on that same area, you'll see English writing, and it'll tell you exactly what it is. But they got weird sayings for some of the stuff. Motor line, we call those phase. Those are your three phase wires, these three guys here. Um, most of these bigger controllers like this, they're going to have, here's your, this is your ignition, this is your hot wire. Basically, if you hook up red to battery and black, no, not that one. Where'd that other one go? Okay, there's two of them here. You're not seeing them, but there's two back sideways. That's your positive and negative. Then you have this third one, which is your ignition. So you hook those two to positive and negative. And then this one here, when it touches, that's what the switch does. The switch engages that one to the red. And when it's touching, it's in energized. The first thing you do when you fire these things up, they talk about this here study line. It's two white cables. Being black and white, you can't really tell, but they're going to have a... Sometimes they're different colors, but these two single-wire plugs, when you first fire it up, connect these, give it power, and you'll see the wheel spin. What it's basically doing is it's, it's orientating itself. And if that's not right, the direction you're spinning, say it's on a scooter, you turn the power off, you unplug it, you plug it in again and do it, and it'll spin backwards. And so that's basically how you orientate it. They call it study, whatever, it doesn't matter. But yeah, that's the basics of this, how it goes. And you do well to you have yourself a voltmeter so you can check what's positive, what's negative, so you don't burn crap up. Um, you can use it for continuity to know if a length of wire, you hook one lead to one end, one lead to the other, and you'll be able to see on the screen or hear the beeps telling you, beep, it's a solid wire. Because when you're working on stuff where there's broken wires, there's no current running, and that's where continuity testing comes in. Um, shrink boot. I got a whole bunch of pieces I cut up just for scrap that I use. But you definitely want to use shrink boot when you're doing this stuff because it's the easiest way. You could use tape, but I've had tape unravel. So these days, I kind of just use tape to close it up, but it takes a little forethought ahead of time. Slide a couple of big, big diameter shrink boots on here first. And so when you're done connecting everything, all these little ones, you could slide the big one over it and make it real clean. You know, it just takes a little thought. And once you've done it a couple of times, your, your uh, process will get better if you're inclined to do that. But anyways, there you go.